Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's Dodger here from Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. Let me start off by apologising for the uh, late video. We're still moving into the new studio and you know, we've got a lot going on. This will be the first in a series of um, effects videos that we're going to do. Put them all on a playlist for you. And so what, what we're doing in this video is we were asked, how, how do I do checkers? Well, in this video we're going to do three different ways of doing checkers. And these little bits I'm showing you, they are bits of plastic card I've painted. And this is Tamiya masking tape, which if you don't have in your, in your studio or on your desk, you should have because it comes in really useful for most things. It's less likely to pull paint off like normal masking tape and it adheres really well. The first the free, first type of uh, checkers we're going to do is just learning how to do those freehand. So all I'm using is uh, simple basic paints. I'm just using black primer to demonstrate this. When trying to do straight lines you don't want to be painting with your wrist and you want to be doing a small brush like a Winsor Newton Series 7 double zero that, that'll be thin enough to do some lines and it'll be nice and straight and if you muck up with those because the lines are going to be so thin you can just thicken them out so they all match as you can see it's, it's not really any effort to do that first line the difficulty comes when you're trying to make all the squares the same size so because we're doing it by eyeball, they're not going to be 100% accurate, but most people who are painting checkers are doing the good old orcs, and they don't have to be 100% straight anyway. I don't think, you know, orcs even know what a ruler is, so I don't think anything they do is straight. But to, to make them match roughly, instead of just drawing the line straight on the end, putting in little black marks, roughly where I think they should go. and then following those marks I'm um, trying to use the previous lines as right angles yeah, sorry about the uh, lighting on this video I don't know what's with the uh, camera today it's been acting up I've got the same amount of lights we usually use as well, but today doesn't want to be doesn't want to be bright enough. So then I'm switching to a uh, bigger brush. This is just a regular Winsor Newton watercolor brush to fill those in. And just like when you had a coloring book as a kid, all you got to do now is stay in between the lines. And remember to double check before you start coloring a block in, because I think everyone will have done that at some point black white, black white or black red, black red and then you're not paying attention and you've gone black black and you've got to start over again or go over it. Really simple stuff. With this type of technique you go over the edge, you just get your series 7 or your double zero brush back out and straighten the edge up a little bit because the, it's such a fine point on this. You can use it like a pencil pretty much and just draw anything straight on. Right, technique number two. Now we're going to be using the awesome Tamiya masking tape that's just our go-to tape. It's a bit more expensive than your regular masking tape though. And what you can see as I've done here is I'm using the size of the masking tape to make the squares and lining them up with like a millimeter or two gap in between. Which is very easy to do and it's gonna provide us with a much straighter line. Then just using it like a um, stencil really and just going over that with a black. You don't have to be too careful. The technique I show you after this, I'll, uh, I'll point out the flaws in doing it this way with a brush. If I'd done it with an airbrush, nothing would have got on the underneath of that tape. The bristles are what's forcing the paint under. So if you've got an airbrush and you're doing this, I'd recommend using that instead. And once that's dry, you just 
gently peel the tape off. Yeah, and uh, because it's, yeah, that's just me screwing up. We all screw up at the studio occasionally. Um, pulled it off too quick, and because the, the red brown colour underneath is just some Vallejo paint on plastic card, it pulled the paint off the plastic card because it hasn't got a proper grip. But if you take your time, it's usually really good tape. Then what we're going to do, once we've got those off, is we're going to use the same pieces, the exact same pieces I already had, and we're going to put them the other way. Uh, because we're using the thickness of the tape, we'll get very accurate square sizes. Um, I'm doing it on a big scale here, but you could use a cutting mat and cut the tape straight down the centre with a ruler and a stand and knife, making the squares a lot smaller. It cuts really easy. And just functions really well um, and I've pulled some paint off there but like I said it's because it's on plastic card and that's got a satin bit finish to it so there's not much for the paint to grip to. Now all we're going to do is rinse and repeat that and um, as you can see and I can keep all of the thing that, um, that's a much neater straighter square line without using freehand and all we do is we just colour those back in same technique this always gets a better result than trying to do it freehand if you want them nice and neat. And this for the side of a tank that's got a flat surface would probably be the way to do it. I guess you sort of have to um, you have to sort of match things up if you're doing shoulder pad on an orc or something, you're probably going to have to do that through hand. But if you've got a big work surface, you can start doing different things. Each technique here will have its own place when you're painting checkers. And of course, the very obvious one is to cut squares, although this will never be as accurate because you have to line all the corners up. Just sort of threw this one together. I wasn't worried about it being too straight, I'm just trying to show the uh, different results you get and on this one instead of using the paintbrush I'm going to go ahead and use the airbrush to show you how neat the edges can be. If You can do this even if you don't have an airbrush. If you're doing a war truck or a truck of some kind then do you do your primer or whatever or paint it red and prime it. Then put these checkers on with the Tamiya tape all over where you want it. Make sure they're fastened on properly. Just go over it again with a black primer peel those stickers off and you will get a really nice result. Then you just do your metallics on your truck or whatever you need to do. I think it goes without saying, you can do these with any colours, but it tends to be best to do black afterwards, because um, it's going to cover whatever's underneath it, rather than the other way around. And that's a very crisp edge because the airbrush doesn't push anything underneath there. And now I'm just going to peel these off and uh, show you the results. I ended up mocking it up a little bit, pulling some more paint off, but that was to be expected. Um, you know, this is the first in this series of videos we're going to do on effects. I think Andy's going to do some lightning effects, uh, we're going to do some hazard stripes, and in this same series we're going to go through stuff like using mask all and rust effects and AK effects and stuff like that. All the technical stuff for this bit of channel. So as usual, if you uh, like our videos, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe, uh, share with our friends, hit like. Got any questions or you want to see any other videos, leave a comment. And whoever it was that was asking for Guild Ball, I think that was someone called Jinx, that's coming up in February. We've got all the Guild Ball models lined up, ready to go. So that's all for me today. I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.